Hey squad, in today's video, we dive deep into sickle cell disease, also known as sickle cell anemia. What is it and how should we as EMS providers treat it? So let's get started. Sickle cell disease is caused by a defective inherited gene called the sickle cell gene. The child must receive this gene from both the parents to be diagnosed with the disease. If the child only has one sickle cell gene, they are known to have a sickle cell trait and typically will lead normal healthy lives. Testing for the disease begins early in life as symptoms can begin as early as five months post birth. Here in the United States, the most common demographic to contract this disease are those of the African American descent. One in every 365 African American children in the US will be diagnosed. However, those of Hispanic, Southern European, Middle Eastern, or Asian Indian backgrounds also have a high tendency to be diagnosed with sickle cell disease. There are hospital treatments out there for sickle cell disease, like medications to keep symptoms under control, blood transfusions, and even stem cell transplants. There is no generalized cure for the disease unless you receive the stem cells. That's the background. Let's now get into the A and P of it. Sickle cell disease attacks the globular, nearly spherical protein hemoglobin on the red blood cells. Healthy hemoglobin uses iron to transport oxygen from the lungs to the tissues of the body. A sickle cell patient develops stiffened rod-like hemoglobin, which in turn transforms the shape of the red blood cells from a nicely rounded to a crescent or sickle shape. These sickle-shaped red blood cells lose their ability to change shape when traveling smoothly inside the vasculature. This leads to the bursting or clumping of these red blood cells within the vasculature. If enough of these cells clump together in one area, a blockage will form and the surrounding tissues will become hypoxic. Depending on where this blockage forms, it could have devastating consequences like stroke, myocardial infarction, or even pulmonary embolus. However, the more common side effect of these blockages is significant and severe pain due to the acute hypoxia. This sickle cell pain crisis is something we as providers need to recognize by getting a thorough history of our patients and being keen observers in our assessments. But it is also something to take very seriously. Getting these people to a hospital as well as beginning the steps for pain management is the key to their comfort. BLS providers can place them in a position of comfort and give them oxygen if warranted. I cannot stress enough to not disregard these patients' complaints of pain just because you can't see the cause with your own eyes. Other symptoms you may encounter and must be aware of are jaundice, edema to the hands and feet, pale nail beds, fatigue, fever and infection, shortness of breath, vision changes like blindness, and issues with urination. As stated before, treat the symptoms you see, like shortness of breath with oxygen. Place them in the position of comfort and gather as much data as you can about their condition and transport them to the hospital. If they are having pain, please do your patients a favor and treat the pain. Lastly, I told you this disease is sometimes referred to as sickle cell anemia. That is due to the short lifespan of these defective red blood cells. The typical lifespan of a normal healthy red blood cell is anywhere between 90 and 120 days, whereas a sickle cell will last around 10 to 20 days. This creates a greater demand for new red blood cells, which at times the body can no longer keep up production to meet demand. This causes anemia or a condition of limited red blood cells. Well guys, that's it for today's video. Stay safe out there and I will see you in the next video.